this video series, we're going to explore the paint tools in 3D Coats Paint Workspace individually. And in the process, we're going to also try and draw some correlation between the tools you may be used to in Photoshop and those in 3D Coat. 3D Coat was designed to be very Photoshop centric. And this only helps to shorten the learning curve for any new user. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by pointing out here on the left hand side of the interface a tool panel that should look very familiar to you. I'll go ahead and quickly jump over there. And you can see, very similar. The foreground background color picker in Photoshop is at the bottom, but in 3D Coat it's toward the top, but it's nearly identical. You have this little toggle, just like you do in Photoshop, to toggle between the two and the same hotkey, which is X. And in 3D Coat, a lot of times if you're using a material, which is essentially just an overlay, let's use something like this. You can move it about in the interface. And what will happen is if I paint with green here, I'll just go to the top of the panel. Let me give myself a little more real estate here. Let me create a new layer. And I'll work with just color. And that's it. No specularity and no depth. And so as I begin painting, you'll notice it's applying that color tint. So I'll undo. This time I'll just right click to basically disable or turn off uh, the color here. And now when I'm painting, I'm painting with just the color from this material and that's it. Okay, so let me undo again and I'll just close this material. And so you'll notice in 3D Coat when you change a tool, then your options here in the toolbar change contextually as well. So let's switch to something else and you can see how that occurs. Same thing applies to Photoshop. You can see how they change here in the toolbar. Now when you choose the paintbrush, you also have a little toggle here close to the top for your brush options. So in 3D Coat, what you have is an E panel and you have your different draw modes. In the Intro to 3D Coat series, we go into this into some depth. I believe it's the fourth or fifth video and uh, it goes through one by one of all these different draw modes, but you'll notice uh, you have basically brush draw modes up to this point and then it begins to change somewhat. You're able to paint along a line or a curve. In this case you have a spline where you can paint along that spline. Then you have stamps okay, and then some selection tools which you would normally find in Photoshop at the very top of the tool panel such as your elliptical, rectangular, uh, and other basic selections, and your freeform lasso, and even your magic wand. Let's go back to 3D Coat. And so yeah, you even have a magic wand here as well. But most of these draw modes apply to practically all the rooms in 3D Coat. Uh, you can use brush modes or even, again, selection modes. Okay, we'll go back to our paintbrush here. I'm going to right click over the top to re-enable this color. And let's go over here to the right side of the interface now and you'll notice just as you have in Photoshop in the lower half or the lower third of this column you'll have a layer panel and you'll have a lot of icons that are very similar to what you see in Photoshop such as create new layer, trash can, merge down, uh, duplicate, uh, you can move a layer up and down this way or you can move to the right side when you see this little move icon and drag it wherever you need. And then you have all these secondary panels, just as you would in Photoshop. You see you have your layer panel, complementary panels that are somewhat relative to your layer panel here, and then different panels or palettes, such as swatches, color picker. And likewise in 3D Coat, you have the color picker at the top of the column. You have different types of pickers, bar, triangular, quad, and round. And then the image picker is pretty unique to 3D Code. It's like having a reference image inside your viewport, but at the same time, you can also access color from it. So at any point in time, you can just click inside your image and 3D Code will select that color. You don't even have to invoke the eyedropper or anything of that sort. You can click on the select button to bring an image in. And then the little toggle here to survey the different images you have stored. If you want to see a larger thumbnail, just hover over the small one for a second or so. And you can also adjust the hue, saturation, lightness of that image as well if you like. You can navigate right here 
zoom in and out. And once you're zoomed in, you can pan about your image and so on. So it's very, very handy. With all these panels, just like in Photoshop, you can drag and drop them to dock them wherever you like. In 3D Coat, you essentially have a number of different asset panels. I typically will like to dock them toward the bottom. Now you can place them side by side and modify them however you wish or put them all in the same dock. Do the same thing with materials and masks. Now for a further exploration of the user interface, make sure to check out the first five or six videos of the Intro to 3D Coat series because the focus here is to primarily go over the paint tools themselves. One thing you'll probably notice when watching various tutorials is that no two artists layout is the same and that's because 3D Coat is so customizable. So now let's quickly touch on the 2D Texture Editor in 3D Coat. It gives you much of the same image editing capability in Photoshop but directly inside 3D Coat's Paint Workspace. So this allows you to simultaneously paint either in the 2D editor or the 3D viewport and see live changes. So whatever you paint here will be reflected live in the 3D viewport and vice versa. Okay, you also happen to have access to the different channels that you have on any given layer. The depth, color, and specularity. Now you can click on any one of these icons to enable or disable that particular channel or use any combination of them simultaneously. So before I dock this texture editor out of the way, let me go ahead and show that you can actually place it to the left of your tool panel. And that way you can have your tool panel or your tools right in between these two different modes. Okay. So I'll go ahead and dock that somewhere. And the presets panel here allows you to store attributes or assets such as brush alphas and strips or any adjustments you might make in the brush options panel, toolbar, tool options, and including the E panel as well. So instead of you having to go back and make those adjustments all over again later down the line, this allows you to store them right here in this preset panel by clicking on this toggle, add preset. And you can also store it to a file or your group of presets to a file. Okay, so let's go back over to Photoshop here. And I'll point out one other common element between the two applications, and that is the swatches palette. If you don't see it in your interface by default, you can go to the Windows menu, pop-ups, color palette, and dock it in the upper right-hand corner if you like. And not only can you pick from it, but you can also add to it. So whatever color you have in the foreground, if you want to store it to the palette, you just click on the little icon here. And once you have stored a number of colors here and you want to save that, then you can save and then reload later on if you like. And then you can choose the size here, maybe let's go small. There we go. Now before we conclude, some of you may be wondering why the Vox Tree Layer panel is located here also in the paint room. And that's because Vertex or voxel painting was added to 3D Coat not too long ago. And it simply shares the same workspace when you're sculpting on a voxel model, you need to go to the voxel workspace for that very purpose. But when you're painting, you have the ability to use not only the same tools, but with a vox tree layer panel, you can hide and unhide some of the different layers that you have. You can even apply ghosting as well. So I hope that explains it. We'll now bring this video to a close and pick up in the next one where we start covering the individual paint tools. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching.